My Dress Up Darling was one of, if not the most popular anime of the winter season. The show is simply gorgeous throughout with top tier animation and a story that rises to and even exceeds the stellar visuals. Of course, one also can't understate Marin's impact on the show's popularity. The female lead of the romantic comedy's main duo, much well-earned praise has been heaped upon both her shoulders and those of Hina Suguta, the voice actress who brought 2022's Best Girl to life, despite it being her first performance. But as deserved as the hype around Marin is, I've seen relatively little chatter about Gojo, the other half of this romantic duo and the steadfast straight man to Marin's more eccentric and chaotic personality. The show opens with a very reserved Gojo, one without many friends, but with an unbridled passion for Hina dolls. He grew up in a Hina doll shop and has devoted himself to learning the craft of creating them from his grandfather, whom Gojo lives with. Now, this passion and devotion to Hina dolls has left Gojo with some gaps in his socialization. He admits in later episodes that he would often choose practicing his craft over going out with other children, leaving him devoid of certain experiences, such as attending the local fireworks festival or going to the beach. Of course, there's more to Gojo than meets the eye. Another facet of his shy personality comes from a moment we learn of much earlier in the show. As a young boy, Gojo brought a friend from school to the shop to share the sublimity of Hina dolls with her. This friend was actively disgusted that Gojo would love the Hina dolls, that he would find them beautiful. This moment clearly had a major impact on Gojo and is likely as responsible for him growing up into such a reserved, quiet young man as the actual love for Hina dolls is. This moment taught Gojo that passions were something to be hidden away and never discussed, as opposed to something that should be expressed and shared and enjoyed with other people. The greatest change Gojo undergoes over the course of the story is allowing his passion to be seen more clearly for Hina dolls and also passions he learned alongside Marine for things such as cosplay and photography. And all of this is made possible with Marine's help. When we first meet her, it's through Gojo's point of view as he considers her to be the popular girl who might take the same class as him in the same high school, but exists in a completely different world. A world of socialization and friends and trends that Gojo has simply never been a part of. The story demands that the popular girl and the quiet guy run into each other to really kickstart the story. And when this happens in the high school's home rec room, Gojo learns that he and Maureen have more in common than he initially thought. Marine loves anime and erotic games and cosplay every bit as much as Gojo loves his Hina dolls, and she talks him into using his sewing expertise to make her a cosplay, a cosplay that ends up being the first of many. But Marine doesn't just draw Gojo from his shell with erotic high schools and magical girls. Because she has no issues holding back her interests, Marine is more open in general than Gojo, and that influence is really what starts to pull him from his shell and make him more open in turn. Where Gojo expects their interactions to be held strictly in locales outside of school so nobody sees them together, Marine greets him in front of her friends. Where Gojo expects their relationship to be a transactional, one-time deal, Marine is already planning their next cosplay. It's this contrast between the two that makes their relationship work. In many ways, this dynamic feels a lot like your standard opposites attract that you would find in many shoujo anime. And that's true. One of the more unique parts of the relationship is the way Marine is the one who falls for Gojo and she falls hard, but she's also somewhat open about it, at least to herself and by proxy the audience. This isn't to say that Gojo has no feelings for Marine. He definitely does, but his aren't quite as developed 
as hers, and he's not nearly so open with them to her or himself. But the experiences he gains with Maureen and how she influences him goes far deeper than any romantic or sexual attraction he feels for his friend. My Dress Up Darling doesn't shy away from tropes, but often takes them and tweaks them a little bit, such as how Maureen is the one falling for Gojo, even though this feels like a story where it would be him falling for her. One trope the show doesn't shy away from is having the male lead of the romantic duo be a bit of adult. And there's nothing inherently wrong with this trope. It set up a lot of good humor and a lot of good shows, but in Gojo's case, it feels just a little bit more meaningful. Gojo isn't just socially awkward or dumb because haha, it's funny. It's drawn from the moments we spoke of before when Gojo grew up friendless and rather alone, so he doesn't know how to conduct himself around a close friend. Gojo not quite knowing how to act and getting so flustered doesn't feel like it's just a character trait to be checked off a list of ways to get a cheap laugh. It's deeply ingrained into his character himself. His inexperience is earned through the trials and passions that have brought him to this point in his life. It all springs from that love of Hina dolls, that deep-seated passion that makes up the heart of his character. The deep-seated passions don't just make up Gojo, but every character in the show and many of its central themes. That passion is shared between every character we meet, whether it's passion for cosplay, or anime, or Hina dolls, or photography. As much as this anime is about two awkward teenagers falling in love, it's also about people learning to embrace their passions, learning to find pride in what they love, in unabashed self-expression. One of my favorite scenes in the anime is in episode 8, Backlighting is the Best. This is the episode where Gojo visits the beach for the first time, going after school with Maureen. There's plenty of comedy in this sequence, but I want to focus on one of the more emotional moments. After following Maureen into the surf, Gojo reflects on a conversation with Gramps where Gramps told Gojo that he couldn't become a great doll maker just by studying Hina dolls. He had to observe many things, experience everything he could, see as much as what the world could offer him as possible. Indirectly, Gramps was telling Gojo to step out of the Hina shop to live a fulfilling life and see what happens when he pours that into his art. And as Gojo stands in the water, staring out at the horizon, it's clear that he's taken this message to heart. He's not just experiencing his time with Marine here, but the sight of the horizon, the sound of the water, the sensation of the sand and waves pulling at his feet. Part of what makes this scene so fulfilling to watch is how open and vulnerable Gojo is in this moment, something we don't often see him portray. Marine watching from the shore really ties this scene together because she is every bit as captivated by Gojo in this moment as we are. Finally, Marine's affection for Gojo also helps us understand his character a little bit better. By watching her fall in love with him, we watch her highlight some of the traits that she considers to be his best, the ones that make him the best boy to go along with Marine's status as best girl. The dedication that Gojo pours into his cosplay, taking the time to make sure that every little detail is right. The gentle wonder with which he views the world that Marine begins to open up in front of him. And the unbridled passion for cosplay and Hina dolls that Gojo feels grows stronger and stronger and more and more apparent with with every passing episode. Marine didn't fall for Gojo because of some hidden complexity or some great depth that we're not seeing. Marine fell for him for the simple charms of Gojo Wakana.